Hello, welcome to the second video introducing the derivative. We saw how to calculate it as the limit of the secant line slopes, giving you the tangent line slope. But we don't seem to get a good feel for what, what are we calculating? What is this? So we have a functions graph and we have this tangent line. Why do we care about it so much? If you take the graph of the function and the tangent line from afar, doesn't seem like it's going to be useful to you. Zooming in though, okay, we start to see the value in it. Um, so this is a one time zoom and a two time zoom uh, going across here, and then it's basically a four times. So as you zoom in, in a small window here, the same, this is the same function and the same tangent line. Um, the point behind it is that locally, Nearby, the point of tangency, the, the yellow dot is a point of tangency. Nearby there, the graph of the function and the graph of the tangent line coincide. Locally, the function is linear, although it's not. The function is definitely, you know, a curve. But as we zoom in, though, on that point of tangency, Remember now, tangent line comes and only touches at that one point locally. Later on, it might touch someplace else, but at that point, they agree. No place else they do, but they don't disagree by much, though. We can even zoom in further if we needed to, to see that. Here's where it's headed eventually. Okay, we can then talk about how this slope of the tangent line is definitely telling you how it's increasing. And it's then going to be used to discuss how the function is changing. When the tangent line is positive, we can say that that's, a, that's an upward sloping function, upper sloping tangent line, upper sloping function. They are, they are identical, you know, nearby. And so the tangent line is increasing. Well, the function is increasing. Okay. And then we can, we can do so much with this idea that the tangent line is a means to say something intelligent about the function. It's an approximation to the function, which we... Hopefully at some point I can get a better approximation. I mean, it's looking like it's a good one, but we can get even better by using a higher degree polynomial than a line. Okay, so that's, that's the, the idea. Um, we talked about how we can um, have the average rate of change be, you know, what's represented in the secant line slope, right? The change in Y over change in X. Um, and the, uh, the Greek letter Delta, the capital version, is uh, a stand in for the, for the phrasing change in. And so change in y over change in x, that's for the, the blue line. And then we have the tangent line, the red line. And so um, we have what's called a difference quotient, a quotient of differences. We have the change in y divided by the change in x. It's a difference quotient. There's other difference quotients. That's one of them, though. And this difference quotient is an approximation. It can be used to, to get a good idea as what the tangent line slope is. Um, the smaller the change in x, the better the approximation it is. It represents the average rate of change of the function, and it can be used to approximate the instantaneous rate of change of the function. We're interested in knowing the instantaneous rate of change at P, and we can use the average rate of change over some interval, x1, x2, as an approximation to that. Okay, As we take the limit, as the gap between them goes to zero, the delta x, the change in x goes to zero, then we can say what we have in hand then is the instantaneous rate of change. Okay, found by taking the limit of the average rate of change. We're using the same words we used in the other videos. Secant line slope represents average rate of change. Tangent line slope represents instantaneous rate of change. Okay, all right, great. So the steeper the tangent line slope, the steeper the function, the more, um, the more steep the function is, and we can then use that and, and be able to talk about um, comparing the steepness of the, uh, the function at different points. So here's just, a, here's just a graph of a function called g of x. And there are uh, four points that I'm interested in looking at the tangent line slope. The prime symbol, remember, that's a derivative that represents the slope of the tangent line. And so we have, I'm interested in that at negative 2, 0, 2, and four. So I'm going to go ahead and draw it in. The tangent line at negative two. Okay. Great. It's a positive sloping line up and to the right. 
the tangent line at zero. That's a negative sloping line. The tangent line at two is positive. Tangent line at four, positive. Uh, this particular question is asking us to compare these different symbols, the, the numbers that are represented by these symbols. And so there's four different symbols here, and then there's a the number zero. Okay. Um, these symbols represent the slopes of the tangent line. Only one of these tangent lines have a negative slope, so that's got to be first. The derivative at zero is negative. We don't know the value of it, we just know that it's negative, though. Okay. All the other guys are positive. So what's, what's going to be listed next in the hierarchy here is the number zero. And then we have to decide who's the most positive, who's the least positive. Okay, who's the steepest, who's the least. So of the three that are left um, at negative two, at two, and at four, all these positive slopes that we have listed here, who is the least steep? Just judging, just eyeballing it. Okay, um, The least steep happens at four comparing what's happening at four to what's happening at two to what's happening at negative two. That line at four is the smallest of those slopes. It's the least th steep. So we put that next in our line, uh, next in our hierarchy. And the, it's, it's a toss up, it's hard to tell, but I would say that the first, uh, at negative two, that first sloping, uh, that first slope, that tangent line has the highest slope. And then the guy in the middle is just in the middle. So G prime of four, G prime of two, and the biggest being G prime of negative two. Okay, and we're going to tie this to increasing and decreasing. Positive sloping tangent line, your function is increasing. Negative sloping tangent line, your function is decreasing. So this particular function increases. We're going to find out what's so important about this point where it stops increasing at. And then it begins to decrease. What's so important about this point where it stops decreasing at? Then it begins to increase again. And so we can use that to really get some great information about the function. Okay. All right. Um, let's let's put it to real life a real life problem. So we have a, a function that measures um, the cost. Okay. Uh, cost of what? Uh, cost of producing gold. Okay. You're you're in a mine and you're going to produce gold out of this mine. And there's a certain cost formula. And the cost is going to be um, um, a function, a single variable function. Of course, in real life is not, but a single variable function. Cost as a function of the the ounces of gold x being equal to the number of ounces of gold that you extract from, from this mine, and C of X being the cost of doing that, okay? We wanna measure how that changes, okay? What is the meaning of this symbol C prime of X? It's a formula, okay, that represents the, remember now, derivative, rate of change, okay? Instantaneous rate of change. And so it, is a, it measures the instantaneous rate of change of our function. Okay, so it's a, it's a fraction which measures the change in cost divided by the change in ounces of gold produced. Okay, it's a ratio, all right? And so if you're able to say, if I produce five less ounces of gold, I can now have a way of saying, how does that affect my cost? What is the change in my cost? This, this will help me measure that. And that's something that, that would be information that you would definitely want to know. So whenever you have a particular function, mostly in an economics class or like in a, in a business application, we have the derivative of it gets tagged with the word marginal. So if you, see, if you ever see marginal cost, marginal profit, marginal revenue, this means the derivative of that function, okay? The rate of change of the production cost with respect to the input variable, which is the number of ounces that you produce. That's marginal cost, okay? The units for it, well, cost is in dollars, X is in ounces, so dollars per ounce is the unit measurement, okay? So if somebody gives you a number and says C prime of 800 equals 17, how do you interpret those symbols in the context of the problem? The rate of change of the cost when the number of ounces produced is 800, that's equal to the number 17, the units dollars per ounce. 
But see, let's set it up as a fraction. This is meant to be a fraction. So let's put the 17 on top of one. Okay. The numerator is a change in cost. Denominator is the change in input. You're at 800 right now. Okay. You're producing at a level of 800 ounces of gold. If it goes up to 801, if it changes by one, the cost should change by $17. Officially, the cost of producing that 801st ounce of gold is $17. Okay. We are producing at 800 already. We don't know the cost for that. Okay. But we do know that the cost of producing one more would make whatever that cost was go up by 17. And so increasing by one will increase cost by 17. Okay. And so very good job. That's the interpretation of um, the derivative used in a real life problem. And, and we'll do many more of these. Just want to scratch the surface and not just talk about calculating the number, kind of get a feel for what the number means. It's a rate of change. It's a fraction. The change in the output divided by the change in the input. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and end for now. Um, we'll come back and we'll actually discuss the derivative formula. See, I don't want to have to redo this every time, like calculate this, you know, that limit every single time. I want to be able to do it one time and then I have a formula that I can plug in as I move to different X values. It'll be a formula that will, as its output, spit out the derivative, the slope of the tangent line, the rate of change of the function. Okay, so that'll be coming up in the next video. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. Please like and subscribe, comment down below, um, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.